This is a meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education. It is May 5th, 2016. Can I have the roll call? Mrs. Bealy? Here. Mrs. Lyford? Here. Mrs. Maffingill? Here. Dr. Miles? Mrs. Murphy? Ms. Perry? Here. Ms. Shea? Here. Ms. Hobbs? Ms. Hartle? Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? There are none. Superintendent's report. Um, <coughs> I had provided to all of you an earlier report uh, related to the Scarborough Arts Council, and I wanted to uh, give you a bit of an update um, as well. Uh, the council at the time that I gave the update was entertaining some proposals um, to basically provide seed money to. And um, as you know, this is a team of school staff representatives, uh, leadership council representatives, and we have some very dedicated community members who are also part of the, the Arts Council. Um, it was created for the purpose of really um, taking a look at and managing the uh, trust that was established in the name of the estate of uh, Louis and Tina Feinberg. And I had the great pleasure of actually meeting Louis and chatting with him when he had made an initial um, uh, donation to the schools. And he, uh, I would just say, in, a, in the most positive way, he was really quite a character. I think he was, Joanne, how old? 99 when we, we saw him? We met him when he was 99. Yeah, so just, to, and he's a musician. He owned a music store and so on. So um, his, the purpose was to, of this trust, was to ensure, A, that the back PAC program um, always had enough money and uh, as well to support music and arts education for our students. So the Arts Council has actually approved um, three new projects that I think the board will be excited about. Um, there is an instrument and vocal lessons proposal. Uh, Jeff Ertman brought this forward. It's a proposal um, that would expand on an existing program that's already offered both at the middle school and the high school for wind and brass, brass instrument, instrument players. So this proposal would make it possible for area music specialists beyond the wind and brass sections to offer additional clinics for groups of student musicians. Really, really fine tuning with experts in, you know, in that particular instrument, uh, the, the playing that uh, the kids are doing. Um, a new opportunity, which is um, uh, very also very exciting, is to provide some uh, group vocal study um, in small groups with area vocal and singing professionals. So um, we thought that would, would be a, a, a tremendous thing to uh, provide some seed money to and, and get that moving. The second is really exciting, and that is a new elementary strings program. Mm -hmm. um, and this brand new to Scarborough program would introduce strings instruction and appreciation uh, to students in grade three. And subsequently, um, if there's enough interest and enthusiasm and energy, uh, that would spread to grades four and five as those grade three kids progress. Um, the project will also create a partnership with both the Portland Symphony and the Thornton Academy Orchestra as students and parents would be getting introduced to the strings, playing strings and, and string music basically, orchestra, or orchestra music. So we're really excited about that. The third, um, again, people I think will be very excited about. When I first came here five years ago, everyone had on their minds the loss of the art show. Well, the good news is that Scarborough schools and the Scarborough school and the Scarborough community will be reintroduced to a new vision of an art show that showcases the many talents of our students across all of the schools and across all of the arts, visual, performing, graphic, etc. It's going to be called, I believe, the Celebration of the Arts. That will begin in 2016-17, so next this upcoming school year, and it would be hosted on an every other year basis. It's really too much to do every year, so it would be every other year. Um, the proposed dates are May 1 through 4, um, 2017, and it would happen at the Wentworth School. The show would encom encompass all of the K-12 art programs 
and would include all K-12 students. So it's a very, very exciting reimagining of an old, very successful art show, um, expanding it and, uh, and really improving on that. The fourth, um, which is a proposal that is still in proposal form and has not yet um, been funded, and we're going to take a closer look at this in the fall, is an Af African marimba band. Um, and Chris Fletcher brought this forward um, in the same way that some schools have those steel drum steel bands, drum. And, uh, and they end up being instruments that are used in in uh, adult education and so and uh, in uh, in basically in all of the different schools and so on, this is an African marimba band, and the proposal includes the construction and purchase of a set of Zimbabwean style marimbas to be used to teach and perform Southern African style music in grades three to five. And if you listen to the music, um, which we got a little preview of, it's the kind of music that you can't really stay still when you're listening to it, so it just kind of makes you feel pretty good and makes you want to move a bit. Uh, there would be an artist in resident th uh, residence that would be hired to teach the students, um, and, uh, and as I said, this, this proposal is to actually um, take care of the construction of and purchase of those, those, um, those marimbas. Um, so the instruments, once constructed, would be used in uh, um, adult education classes and in addition to student classes and in extracurricular activities for students grades 6 through 12. Um, that's still pending. So um, if you have some, some particular feelings about that, um, you might want to let us know about those. Um, I just made the note that, incidentally, these are all initiatives that should be underwritten by the school budget. Um, uh, they're not, and uh, with that n not now being a part of the budget, we are um, absolutely so grateful for the generosity of the late Louis Feinberg uh, to make this possible. Uh, the total um, out of the trust that would be spent is approximately $40,000. So that's um, $40,000 that is not included in the budget, but um, does make some really nice arts experiences possible for not only our kids, but for the community. Amazing. Um, next, we have a series of three important updates that I've asked Monique Culbertson, uh, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, to provide to the board and to the public. Uh, the first relates to the Scarborough Technology Plan submission, soon to be due to the, uh, the Maine State Department of Education. The second is a brief report out on our No Child Left Behind status, and as you all know, that relates to federal funds that we receive, um, albeit uh, decreasing funds. And lastly, and likely the most exciting item, not that the other two are not exciting, Monique, uh, relates to revisiting um, our overall K-12 world language strategy and plan. I know that's been a topic of interest, um, and I think we're also going to get a quick update on our Mandarin language initiative. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, technology plan, this is really a bit of a heads up. Uh, the technology plan is required by the state every three years, and every three years it comes before the board for approval. Uh, this year it is uh, new. It's due before the end of June. That's not new. Um, but the format is new, more of a focus on learning. Our focus within our technology plan has always been on learning and using technology for learning, so I don't think it's going to be too difficult to shift for us, but it is a different sort of a structure. Uh, we're going to use a collaborative effort like we have in the past. Um, we have also been able to leverage some data. We've had a Bright Bite survey done at the middle school funded by the state as well as the high school students, and that will give us some wonderful baseline data for our high school students, um, but also give us some continuing data for the middle school students, and we're going to use that data to develop or update, basically, our action plan for the use of technology. Uh, we have a number of strategies that are in place that are going to bode well for us in terms of this plan, and that's our technology instructional coaches who are providing the professional development um, for ongoing technology learning within the schools, which is really, and their focus is really on quality instruction using technology. So we aren't about just integrating technology. We're about effective use of technology to improve student learning. Uh, so it's a matter of putting that information together and developing that plan. We'll get that to you in the next couple of weeks, and hopefully we can get that on an agenda um, in early June as an action item and then submit it to the state. 
That's the technology plan update. The other update is a No Child Left Behind uh, grant application for fiscal year 19, uh, 2017, this next year. Uh, as you know, on the federal level, um, the um, uh, Elementary and Secondary Education Act has been reauthorized. No Child Left Behind is going away. We still have one more year where No Child Left Behind is in effect. A state is referring to that as the gap year. Uh, so we have another grant year and then there'll be a sort of a transition. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. The um, folks at the DOE are trying to figure out what those 1,200 pages of federal legislation mean. Uh, in essence, just in short, uh, we will still have standards, we will still have assessments, we will still have the accountability piece. There will be still that 95% participation rate. There will be more flexibility in terms of what those assessments might look like and what that accountability might look like. But more on that to come. That might even be a topic for a workshop or so in the near future. As soon as we find out, the state gives us some guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of the present and the No Child Left Behind application, uh, as you may know, it's a federal grant. It's dispersed through two titles are left, Title I-A, which is Basic Disadvantaged, and Title IIA, which is Teacher Quality. So we receive funds from the state, uh, through the state, from the federal level uh, to support uh, <clears throat> those two areas. So Title I-A provides, there's only one school that qualifies, that would be a corner school. That, uh, the funding um, is determined on the basis of the percentage of free and reduced lunch numbers, and so we're at about 20% at eight corners. Uh, and that is approximately, last year was approximately $168,000. That funded one teacher, a literacy math teacher, and 2.5 ed techs. And so they provided additional support to struggling students in the area of literacy and mathematics. Part of this grant involves setting goals. We've always reached those goals, and a goal in our case may be to move students um, to within six months of grade level performance. Uh, and we have measurements to do that and uh, strategies to assist students. There's a parent involvement piece as well there. Uh, for next year, um, our thinking is to continue with that same program. It's been effective. We've been able to reduce the numbers of students needing support at Wentworth, and so our plan moving forward is to continue with that. Title IIA, teacher quality, uh, those Projects involve funding um, part of the salaries of our two 6 through 12 instructional coaches who are working together across all content areas. We have an instructional coach for curriculum in the sciences, an instructional coach uh, for curriculum in the humanities, and they work with the leadership and with teachers in the middle school and the high school to make sure that our curriculum is vertically articulated. They're assisting in um, moving towards and meeting the proficiency-based diploma requirements. Uh, and so that movement, we want to continue with that progress. And so next year, we're going to be proposing, proposing the same projects with the same goals. And that really isn't providing professional development in order to move towards that. Uh, this federal grant also has um, um, a requirement to make this publicly known, what our plans are for next year, but also in invite the public, if they have any comments or questions about our proposal for next year, um, to contact me. So if, as board members, if anyone asks you a question about this or this proposal, please direct um, your, their questions to me and I'd be happy to involve them or answer their questions about our grant proposal moving forward. Do you have any questions about the technology plan or the... It's riveting stuff. <laughs> it's just riveting stuff. We don't have, um, typically about this time of year, we typically will get a what are called our pre preliminary allocations for funding for the coming year. I double checked just today and we don't have any notice as of yet. Um, there's typically a percentage hold harmless um, so that the funds don't fluctuate too dramatically in any direction. Um, but typically with grant funded positions, Folks know that they are grant funded and the f their positions continue with their positions depends on the funding within the grant. So um, if there's anything dramatic in which we have to change our planning for next year, I'll certainly let the board know. Now on to the fun stuff. Um, our word language, um, this is really an opportunity to provide you with an update on 
um, uh, the thinking in and around our rebuilding of world languages, um, but also to focus specifically on an opportunity we just couldn't say no to in terms of um, the potential for expanding a language offering at our high school. Uh, David Creech uh, wanted to be here tonight. Eric Zavaznik, the department uh, chair, wanted to be here tonight. And also Renee Nayanuzzi, who is our French teacher who is studying Chinese, um, wanted to be here. But uh, given the short notice and they, all the events going on this spring, they were unable to uh, join me. But if there are specific questions, they'd be happy to answer them. Um, let me give you a little bit of context around the World Language Program, we have a goal in the World Language Program, and that goal really is for all students, not just some, for all students to develop proficiency in English and at least one other language. And that proficiency means communicating in meaningful and appropriate ways with people of other languages. So it really is about a communication skill. It's always been the intention of the high school to expand language offerings as resources allow. Since I've been here, I've had conversations with Eric around how can we offer Japanese, how can we offer Chinese. Um, but we're working within our resources. Uh, currently, the rebuilding, the decision was made to rebuild backwards because we had some pieces in place, we had strong programs at the high school, and we needed to work backwards at the middle school. Uh, one of the goals is to provide the same amount of time and frequency of that time for a language, um, for world languages, as we do for English. If our goal is really moving towards proficiency and learning another language, we should really be striving to provide sufficient time and frequency as we do in the learning of English. And so particularly at the middle school, part of the restructuring and the scheduling was around trying to provide more time within that schedule for world languages. The limit there is still staffing. So presently, sixth graders um, receive uh, Spanish about an hour a week, hour a week, uh, and then seventh grade three hours a week, and eighth grade about four hours a week. English language arts, on the other hand, um, instruction is delivered five hours a week. So with the staffing, the four staff persons that they have right now, they manage to provide that amount of instructional time. Uh, we're in the, also in the process of researching and discussing options at Wentworth because, for example, because a learning a language is a skill, we would prefer to have students receive 20 minutes of instruction every day rather than um, an hour once a week. It just makes more sense in terms of learning a language. So we're, we're having discussions, talking about possibilities, and looking to leverage blended opportunities given the technology we have, both at the middle school as well as at Wentworth. Uh, but back in the spring of 2013, um, we um, came across an opportunity. Actually, it was, I believe, the Sebago Alliance um, superintendents uh, were involved in this. But the USM Confucius Institute offered a Chinese language and culture program. It was an opportunity for K-12 educators to become proficient in Mandarin Chinese and to earn certification in world language, a K-12 certificate, as well as gain 24 credits towards either a master's or 30 credit um, continuing uh, a CAS program. Uh, it was a two-year program with uh, summer study involved as well, including traveling to China to study um, in an immersion program at a university. Renee Nayanuzzi, our French teacher at the high school, uh, was interested and applied and was accepted to the program. Uh, and so the, his coursework was quite rigorous. We supported him with his coursework. He took beginning Chinese, both parts one and two, intermediate Chinese, both parts one and two, and then just last summer traveled to China for an intensive uh, language immersion experience in China. That was about two to four weeks long. Uh, and he's finishing up his studies with a study in uh, Chinese uh, society and culture. Uh, so when, as we've checked in and had conversations, are we ready to offer something in Chinese at the high school? Are we ready yet? In those conversations, we discussed a couple different options. Um, one of the pieces that was particularly important for the high school is to make sure that what other language, the additional language that we offer, um, doesn't play second fiddle to any of the other languages. It holds the same weight, and as students progress, we want to make sure that we have available advanced coursework because, again, our program goal is for proficiency in another language that we are able to offer advanced courses as well. 
So um, we wanted to make sure that it was of equal quality. In addition, um, we wanted to make sure that there was a solid pathway so um, those intermediate and advanced coursework, we felt that students wouldn't sign up if we only offered beginning Chinese. We would like to make sure that in our proposals that we offer the advanced coursework when our resources allow. Uh, so, <clears throat> and as you know, most colleges and universities have a, sort of a two course, two credit requirement for students. Um, and our, the other preference is, and, and this is where it becomes an issue, is sometimes uh, we don't want to get into the situation where students are com competing, they're competing in different languages. So, um, for example, when we visited Glastonbury, Connecticut, one of the pieces that was um, particularly interesting, they have a policy in place that students become proficient within one language, and of course Spanish is that language pretty much K right through high school, and if students want to switch languages, they don't switch, they add another language to their program of studies. Um, <clears throat> so in order to um, ensure quality within our program development, Renee, who is obviously not a native speaker, but is beginning, he would be offering the initial courses, and our thinking would be to hire, and this would be a budget proposal for next year, a Chinese teacher, um, hopefully, preferred is a native speaking Chinese teacher, um, to come and almost team teach with Renee uh, to support his language development, as well as the instruction. Um, in sort of beginning fundamental courses, but then be able to, this new teacher would then be able to offer more advanced courses for our students so we can ensure that pathway towards proficiency. Uh, <clears throat> we're quite grateful that Renee um, has stepped forward to serve in this capacity. Um, it has required time away <coughs> from home. Uh, he has young ones at home, um, uh, and the additional coursework during the school year um, was quite rigorous. Uh, the faculty member is a visiting Chinese professor from the university in China where they visited this um, past summer. Uh, <coughs> So that's pretty much my summary on the expansion at the high school. Uh, if you have specific questions, again, um, uh, David Creech would be happy to answer them or Eric Zavaznik around those pieces, but I can entertain questions on any of these topics if you'd like. Um, so in the fall, this coming fall, <coughs> are they offering? We won't, they have developed the courses. We had to push that aside okay. into next year's budget. Right. There is um, a world language um, position or part of a position, and part of that is to accommodate um, the students, the increased request for world languages at the high school. Okay. Right now we have some class sizes that are 25, 26 students, and that makes it very difficult, especially, especially at entry level, mm -hmm. uh, Spanish one, uh, French one, and uh, Latin one. Anyone else? Just one question, question from me, Monique. I'm sorry, <coughs> got a bit of a call. Um, on our Title I students um, out at Eight Corners, um, do we transport kids from Blue Point and Boston Hill who may qualify for Title I? The way in which the qualification works is by school. It's not by the entire population. So those students who are registered at that school are the only students eligible for Title I. What we do have in place is we have, um, for purposes of equity, we do have academic support staff in place at each of the other two schools. We have common criteria for or definition of struggling readers and mathematicians and so they will receive the services they need. The only difference is that the funding comes from Title I, and it also allows us to provide. We're not allowed to supplant. It's, so it, it, these are additional staff who help support uh, the struggling readers and mathematicians at a corner school only. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Any further, Superintendent? You're all set? Yes. Very good. Um, Chair's report. I only have one item for you this evening, and you may have caught this earlier in April. Um, but the bill, LD 1627, an act to implement certain recommendations of Maine Proficiency Edu Education Council. The new law, 
allows a ramp up to proficiency starting with the core four English, Math, Science, and Social Studies in the class of 2021. So <clears throat> it requires a full implementation of a standards-based diploma by the time of the class of 2025 walks across the stage. So it's a gradual implementation with the four core subjects first for 2021 and then adding art, foreign language, health and PE and career and education development over the following four years to 2025. The class of 2021 is our seventh graders? I yes. believe so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted you to know that that has been enacted. 8.0, we don't have any student representatives this evening, so no reports at this time. 9.0, a recognition? Mm -hmm. Committee reports? Committee reports? Um, I'm sorry, 7.0, committee reports. Do you want to start, Jody? Sure. Um, so the Finance Committee hasn't been doing anything. No. Mm. <laughs> um, we actually met just before this meeting and talked about third quarter um, financials, but I think, uh, I don't know what else to, to say. I guess last night I was blown away that no one got up and spoke um, at the public hearing on the town and school budget. So that sort of threw me for a loop. I'm taking that as a positive mm -hmm. um, and thinking that we've done our job in communicating and will continue to communicate um, what's in this budget, why it's important, the results we hope to, to get from the investments that we're making. Uh, that's all I can take from that. I, I had no idea that that was how it was gonna go. Um, going forward, next week we have a joint town council and school board meeting on the budget um, next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So the public is again welcome to come and, and listen in to the details of the budget yet again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the joint finance committee meeting that was scheduled for the 12th, I think Wednesday the 12th, right, has been canceled due to everyone being somewhere else other than here. <laughs> Fine with me. So that's it. Thank you. Does anyone else have a report, Jackie? Yes, I would uh, just like to keep everybody informed that we are in negotiations with the teachers on the professional contract. Our next meeting will be <coughs> on the 12th. We have a future meeting scheduled for the 20th as well both in, in the month of May. Uh, we are in nego continued negotiations on the contract with the newly appointed superintendent. And then on Tuesday the 10th, uh, the chamber is hosting a dinner for all elected and appointed officials uh, in the town. And that is at the new Bella Vita home on Black Point Road. I think that's it for the moment. Carrie? Uh, the Communications Committee met last Friday, um, starting to plan the next newsletter, hoping for June 1st for the next constant contact email newsletter to go out. Um, uh, we're continuing to use the Facebook page to communicate about the budget, to let the public know when they can um, hear more about the budget again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're up to 600 likes on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you want to mention about teacher appreciation? Uh, sure. Um, yesterday morning, my kids and I played Santa Claus, teacher appreciation Santa Claus to all the schools, and uh, ran around and delivered pastry trays. Um, my kids were really disappointed I wasn't going to go around to the schools again and pick up any leftovers <laughs> <laughs> from them, but <laughs> um, it w so we did that yesterday morning. I hope that they were enjoyed. Sure they were. Hmm. Christine? Uh, long range facilities plan. Um, we had to reschedule our meeting. We're still waiting for a new date uh, to meet with the Harriman Associates, Dan Cecil. So um, as soon as 
that comes up, I'll let everybody know. Um, one thing that's not part of my committee report, but something that Dr. Entwistle said, oh, why don't you mention that, is um, the Scarborough Education Foundation's um, annual graduation balloon purchase is going on currently. So that's online only. You can go on to the Scarborough Education Foundation's website and click through. Um, also, if you don't know of a senior that you wished to deliver a balloon to, uh, that the Scarborough Education Foundation has a, an additional list of names of maybe students that don't have a balloon going to them already. So it's a $5 donation. Um, it's really a great way to celebrate the graduates. Um, I know that the first year that it was done was the year my daughter graduated, and it was really very exciting to have somebody show up and have balloons hung on our front uh, light, and um, <coughs> there were tags attached to each one, and because the weather wasn't so great that day, they had them in a Ziploc bag sealed at the top so that <laughs> the writing on the card wasn't ruined. And it was very nice that, uh, you know, people that I wouldn't have thought would send my daughter a balloon were, you know, people she babysat for, neighbors. I mean, it was, it was very nice. So um, it's a great uh, fundraiser for Scarborough Education Foundation. And as you can see, some of the things that are funded through the uh, foundation are really worthwhile, things that are outside of our school budget um, that certainly enhance the educational uh, process of the students. So please uh, purchase balloons, send them to the seniors that you know, and if you don't know a senior, you can certainly request that they can give you a senior to give a balloon to. Thank you. Jackie? The students aren't here to report, but I think that that the prom is this week. It is Saturday, Saturday night. On Saturday evening. And the kids' fishing derby is Saturday morning from uh, starting at 9 to 2 at uh, Bailey's Campground. Very good. I just wanted to say for the balloon purchase, the website is um, sefmain.org. That's the SEF website. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. 9.0 recognition. <coughs> oh, that was a perfect lead in talking about Scarborough Education Foundation uh, because I wanted to recognize first um, the ongoing incredible generosity of the Scarborough Education Foundation. These are the latest grants um, and the awards, uh, this time totaling over $17,100. Um, I, I thought that it was particularly uh, nice to just give you a sense of the grants that have been funded because they really touch so many students in so many different places just by the diversity of the, the nature of the grants. Uh, so I'll start with uh, K, uh, K2, and this um, has, uh, will impact all of the three primary schools. Um, main author Kimberly Ridley and illustrator, illustrator Rebecca Ray, creators of the book The Secret Bay, will do presentations at each of the K2 schools, and those presentations will include both writing and illustrating workshops. Ni really nice opportunity. In terms of middle school, and this goes to a completely uh, different area, this is assistive technology. Uh, Rogers Easy Pen will enhance academic excellence for students with hearing loss by enabling them to hear peers' comments in group settings and classroom discussion and assisting them to hear their teacher's voice more clearly at times when there's significant background noise. We already do have assistive technology. This is sort of that next level of advanced technology. This grant will fund four of these pens to pilot with students who already have the Rogers receivers. So it's really an enhancement of technology, a, nice, a, a really nice contribution to some of our students with, um, uh, with hearing difficulties. Then we go to the uh, middle school, and that was actually both middle school and high school for the, the students um, with, um, with the Rogers pen. Um, and this is middle school, and it's polar heart rate monitors uh, for middle school physical education. These polar heart rate monitors and polar GoFit software will be purchased to pilot a program in which eighth grade students will self-monitor the quantity and quality of exercises, exercise that they need to do in order to achieve their lifelong health goals. Mm. Kind of cool. <laughs> um, at the high school, shifting way to some other place, 
This is supplementing Shakespeare. This project will provide a mini library of supplemental sources to each English teacher who teaches Shakespeare. And we all know how complicated Shakespeare, Shakespeare can mm -hmm. be. Um, this uh, includes graphic novels, DVDs, audiobooks, and uh, transformed source materials. It will become a resource to support all learners. Um, and they make a notation here, Shakespeare is very challenging, but I think we might have already experienced that firsthand. And then also at the high school, and again to a completely different area, this is Circuit Scribe. And this is a hands-on tool that allows students to draw their own circuits using a one-of-a-kind conductive ink pen. It can be used in all levels of physics classes as well as potential engineering electives. So just in those five grants, think of all of the areas and all of the students that are touched. So we really do appreciate the uh, terrific generosity of the Scarborough Education Foundation. We certainly hope that uh, this community will be supporting them because they do great work. Um, and then uh, this has already been touched upon this past week, and it's actually been over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, there's been multiple recognition and celebration events of the excellence and tireless work done by our instructional staff by our support staff and also by our school leaders. These are the individuals whose contributions to our school community are significant and they are indeed so greatly appreciated. Um, and I wanted to thank the school board for the kind and very thoughtful engagement that they have had, in, and thank you for the delivery service, <laughs> in recognizing and appreciating um, all of us uh, here at the Scarborough School. So thank you all very much. <coughs> Um, let me just mention that I had the good fortune to meet Rebecca Ray and have her uh, do some work in the school I was in. And I can tell you, if, if your child is going to have an opportunity to be with her, it is outstanding. She's amazing. She's a great children's author and illustrator. She has beautiful books and she is just does superb work with with young kids around those, so mm -hmm. I don't know was that Wentworth or was it going to be K K two K two? They're going to absolutely love love that. <laughs> so <clears throat> new business ten point one. Is there a motion for the meeting minutes of April fourth? I move that we accept the. Minutes of April 4th, April 6th, and April 7th as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Did anyone see any corrections, deletions? Very good. All in favor? Five. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 7th as presented. Second. Any discussion about the minutes of April 7th? Very good. All in favor? Five. I make a motion that we accept the minutes of April 8th, April 11th, and April 13th, and April 15th as presented. Second. And there, there are two sets of meet, m meeting minutes on April 8th. That's correct, I, Kelly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry, I didn't, did yeah. I not say that? You did. 8th, oh, you. Thank said you. April 8th, yes. yes. <coughs> Any questions, corrections that you noticed? I just want to point out that the multiple minutes mm -hmm. are for executive sessions that the board held with regard to the superintendent's search and the superintendent uh, negotiations uh, with the newly appointed superintendent. Contract negotiations, I should say. That's correct. Any changes? Very good. All in favor? Five. 11.0, a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1. MRSA, subsection 4056A, for the purpose of discussing with the board details of the new superintendent's employment not to return to public session. So move. Second. All in favor? Thank you. 